Lisa D. Hart here, Three Minutes with the Main Guide. And today I'm going to show you how I like to rig my boats for solo wilderness canoe travel. I recently picked up this beautiful old town camper, circa 1988, and this is the factory seam going down the center. Okay, the first thing I like to do is get rid of the stern seat. Uh, this boat was built in 1988, and this is the really unusual type bolt, I guess. Uh, it's very thin. It curves at the end. It digs into the wood. I got to be really careful not to lose that. Whenever I do take a stern seat out, all the hardware stays together with it. The other thing I like to do is this is SpectraCord. This is a climbing rope. This is really highly rated for tension. And I'm going to put that on each end of the deck plate on all my boats. Um, if I ever, if it's ever the only thing I can clip into in a rescue, I don't want it to fail. Okay, there's the stern seat out. The hardware is all secure in a nice Ziploc sandwich bag, which is always nice to have in your repair kit. Because when that hardware comes out, you better have a safe place for it. Here is the Spectra cord tied to the, to the deck plate with a fisherman's knot. That's not going anywhere. And now we're going to focus on the center, the portage yoke. Now, if you're old enough that when you started guiding, you did it in a segmented life jacket and you saved those foam segments, that's what I use for the portage yoke. That and just electrical tape. It's waterproof, it stretches, it makes a nice tight seal. Just get it from the hardware store don't get it from the dollar store. We're going to begin and end with the electrical tape starting underneath and ending underneath. And we're just going to roll it around, you guys. We're just going to overlap it so it gets a nice tight seal. And I don't, I put the foam only on the top. It doesn't slip around like that. The tape sticks to the bottom and I just make sure that when I rip it off, it ends so that the tape goes underneath the portage yoke. And that stays rock solid for years. And then when you do take it off, if there's a little bit of black gum on the portage yoke, it just comes off with a little bit of goo gone. It's not that big a deal. Okay, one of the few things I don't care for about this boat is the cane seats. And we all know why they just blow out. So this is just a simple, puzzle map cut to size and I'm going to favor this over to the left side because I paddle left and I'm just going to tape it on and call it good to go. So there's the bow seat finished. Now let's talk painter lines. So here is the painter line tied in a bowline on that spectra cord. This is the minimum diameter weight that I will with a line that I will use. I like it to go the length of the canoe and a little bit longer, okay? And very important, I just pile it up, coil it, and it just stays piled in the ends. Nothing fancy. And don't tie any gear to it. This is another thing I don't like. I've seen canoeists do. See this all fancy, fancy, and it's all trimmed and it's great. You don't have a hope of getting that with that boat flipped upside down or full of water, okay? You want that river current to just pull that line out of that boat when it fills with water so you can grab it from anywhere. And the last thing I do is to name it. And this one I named Ruby because she's a gem. I'm Lisa Dehart, and you just spent three minutes with a main guide. Thank you.